Today, we're going behind the scenes, so stick around. Hi everyone, welcome to Pencil Stash. I'm Rachel. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is a weekly show about adult coloring, colored pencils, tips and tricks, and more. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, the bell button to be notified when I've uploaded new content. And if you're enjoying the videos, do me a favor and hit that like button. It helps new folks find my channel. So today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different and I'm very excited. We're gonna be going behind the scenes. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about my process how I film, my pencil stash, including my pencil sharpener, as well as the answers to some questions that I've been getting from you guys via Facebook and your comments here on YouTube. So let's get right into it and let's go behind the scenes. Let's go to my desk and I'll show you how I do it. So now I'm gonna answer some questions that you guys have been asking me for the last couple of months actually on Facebook and on YouTube. I've been getting a lot of the same questions so I thought it'd be nice to just kind of do a little bit of a video and give you a little bit of background about me, my coloring, and uh, some more of uh, the questions that you guys have been asking. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, again, my name is Rachel. Um, I live in Chicago, Illinois, born and raised here. I have a daughter, she will be 10 in June, and actually I'm celebrating my birthday this weekend on Mother's Day. Uh, every couple years it's on Mother's Day, so it's kind of super fun. I get uh, kind, of a, kind of a double whammy uh, on, that, on that day to celebrate two things, not just one. And speaking of Mother's Day, I am a mother. My daughter, Kat, is just wonderful. She's very much um, a creative-minded uh, person like myself. She's super laid back, super funny. She's, she's just very quickly, um, you know, becoming not only my daughter, but one of my very best friends. Uh, my partner, actually, uh, he's a photographer. He is incredibly talented. I think I have uh, even shared some of his work uh, with you guys. If you find him uh, on Instagram, uh, Orion the Hunter Photography on Instagram, he's incredibly talented. Be sure to check him out. I also like doing anything super athletic. So I love to run, I love to snowboard, um, I love to cycle. Uh, I've actually done uh, quite a few Spartan races, if you know what that is, it's uh, obstacle course racing. And I just got back from Montana last week where we did a 15 mile beast uh, obstacle course Spartan race. It was super, super fun. Uh, I love the challenge of um, basically taking something that you think is going to be incredibly difficult and working through it any way that you can and then you kind of come out the outside so much happier than when you went in. It's so funny, I try to always take a before picture and then an after picture and I originally started doing it just to kind of show how clean and then how dirty uh, we you know, kind of came out the other side but the other thing that I noticed about those before and after pictures is that you know before I'm super happy but afterwards, the smile on my face is just enormous. So, you know, it's really interesting how after such a kind of rigorous and, you know, strenuous ordeal that a 15 mile, um, you know, obstacle race through the mountains might seem, you come out the end just happy as a clam. And I love that feeling. What made you decide to become a coloring enthusiast? So this is actually a really interesting one. So I've loved to color and I've loved to draw my whole life. Coloring was definitely one of those things for me when I was a kid that was kind of my go-to. And I had a very specific way that I would organize my crayons. And if you talk to my mom, <laughs> she would laugh because I had to have them in rainbow order and put right back into the spot that I took it from. And if she was coloring with me and she put it back in the wrong spot or she colored something that I didn't think she chose the right color for, I mean, I was very vocal about it. So it's kind of funny. So after coloring as a kid, I really got into drawing and I would just basically just sketch whatever interested me at the time. I would do a lot of like fashion design kind of stuff, uh, you know, when I was younger, pretty much anything that interested me. And I've been drawing ever since. And when coloring kind of came back in, it was actually through my daughter. Uh, this was probably back when she was maybe eight, so a couple years ago. So kitties always love to draw as well. And we would sit at the kitchen island and we would draw together. So I'd get all my colored pencils out and we would take turns maybe drawing like Shopkins, you know, those cute little figures that kids play with nowadays. She had 
a hundred of them and we would take them and we would put it in front of us and we would draw it and I would draw on my page and she would draw on her page and then we would kind of compare and then we do another one and it was so fun and uh, eventually we were at a store and I didn't even really know much about adult coloring but we were at a store and I found this giant poster of adult coloring and it was a, of an owl and uh, so I got two of them for us and so we just sort of started coloring that way and then it just snowballed from there I mean just absolutely so much fun it really just kind of ignited my love of coloring uh, from when I was a kid and I've just been coloring ever since and I started to get more and more into books got more and more pencils got more and more into it and then uh, eventually was uh, was talked into doing some videos for YouTube so that's kind of the the origin story of of my coloring. Tell us a little bit more about Hunter. So all of you have been asking about Hunter and it's so cute to see him in my videos. He is very much a camera hog. He really is. Whenever I get the camera out, he is all over it. Um, he's basically my shadow. So anywhere that I am, he tends to follow me and, and wants to be in on the action. So it's so cute that you guys uh, like to see him. He is a rescue. Um, I got him probably a year and a half ago because he just turned two so about a year and a half ago and uh, we were kind of in the market for a new dog we had lost our dog um, about a year prior and you know we just wanted to make sure that we were getting the right one and uh, we ended up um, actually finding him at um, a rescue organization he was a puppy he was a litter of about eight puppies and goodness only knows what he is he's a mix he's probably a lot terrier probably a little bit of lab a little bit of hound a little bit of who knows what, but he's an absolute love and uh, he's such a good dog. He likes to color with me too. Actually, he's usually uh, laying at my feet while I'm coloring. So while you guys are watching the video, Hunter is never far. And it's really nice that I get to include him in my videos. Are you an artist for a living or is coloring your hobby? I am not an artist for a living. I'm not classically trained. Uh, I've always just loved art. Pretty much anything with colored pencils. That's always been my favorite medium. I'm a horrible painter. I can paint a room. But if you actually gave me some paint and a brush uh, and a canvas, I would not know what to do with it. Um, but uh, basically anything with colored pencils, always loved that. Uh, I have a nine to five job. I'm actually in sales and I travel quite a bit. So a lot of my coloring and a lot of my pencil stash work happens on the nights and the weekends and basically any time that I can, I can fit it in. How many coloring books and sets of pencils do you own? May we see your art room and how you organize your supplies? That is an interesting question. I'm gonna actually take you guys. Let's go check it out. So here's my office. Please excuse the mess. This is where I do all of my coloring. And here's where Hunter's usually hanging out on this little blanket here. Hey buddy, you're so cute. And this is my desk. And when I record, I actually have lights and uh, kind of an overhead apparatus uh, with my camera on it to record. Um, but this is it. This is my space. I like my desk nice and neat. Um, but over here is where I keep all of my coloring supplies. So I have pads of paper and drawing pads, my colored pencils, all of my coloring books. I probably have about 20. Um, and then in terms of colored pencil sets, I have at least four or five. And I've got my cotton pads and my oil pastels, and this is it. What is your favorite brand of colored pencils to use? I'm a Prismacolor girl. I've tried the Faber-Castells, I've tried Derwin, I've tried a whole bunch of other colored pencils, even the cheapy ones, and I, just, I keep going back to the Prismacolors. I really like how soft and supple they are. I really like the choices of color, and I really like the blending pencil that they have. It just sort of works for me, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, try a whole bunch, you know, even if you just end up getting, you know, a small set or some open stock, you know, a couple of colors from your local art store just to try to see what works best for you. But for some reason, I just, I keep going back to the Prismacolors. What pencil sharpener do you use? My pencil sharpener story is actually really funny. So I get a lot of questions and comments about my pencil sharpener and how, how sharp and great my pencils look in the videos. And why it's funny is that I use a really cheap 
pencil sharpener. <laughs> like I keep, you know, feeling bad that like I don't use like a super expensive one or like the Prismacolor one, but I actually use one that I got in a set that I actually got my daughter. It's just a, I think it was like a $14 set, um, but it, it actually just came with the pencils. Um, and I started to use it and I realized how nice and easy it was. And I've, I've had it for years. I've actually found it on Amazon for you guys. So I'll put a link to that down in the show notes uh, just so that you guys can you know look for it if you want. Um, I also, I don't have a lot of breakage problems with my Prismacolors. And I think it's because of this colored pencil sharpener. Um, you know, a lot of people complain about the prismas being so soft that they break uh, or are brittle. I have very little problem with that. Um, so it might be the sharpener. How do you organize your colored pencils? This one's kind of funny too. So if you remember the story that I told you uh, a little while ago about coloring as a little, little kid with my mom, I still put my colored pencils in rainbow order. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, for me, it's just really a matter of, you know, when you have so many colored pencils, you kind of want to be able to find the one that you're looking for right away. Or if you're looking for a red, you kind of want to know, you know, what's my what's my red options? What are my options in that in that range of color? So I actually just use some really cheap uh kitchen utensil dividers that I got from Target. I have two of them, and I actually just have a different section for each color. So I've got one for red, pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, um, and then um, uh, you know purple and all of my browns and all of my grays. Um, I really like this method. It keeps me organized. It helps me put colors back uh, in, their, in their proper place. Uh, and then I've also gotten some open stock. So, so when I bought my, my original set of Prismacolors, I only got the set of, I think it was 60. And as I started to realize that I really liked the Prismacolors, I wanted more. But because I kept buying more Prismacolors, they wouldn't fit into the tin that the set of 60 came in. So I quickly realized like, well, I don't wanna have it in two separate spots. So I need to figure something out. And so I got this um, book that has these little like uh, slide dividers so that you can kind of open up this like accordion book and have all your pencils. But they were kind of a pain in the butt to like take out more of a pain in the butt to put back in. And I really just wanted something that I could drop in, grab very easily, and um, out of all of the solutions that I've tried, the kitchen utensil dividers are my favorite. How do you pick your colors? That is a great question. And I'm not sure that it has a very clear answer. So kind of the way that I pick my colors is a lot based on my gut. Like, you know, when you, when you look at a page, you just sort of see see certain colors sort of speaking to you. Um, you know, I try at the beginning, like if it's a, if it's a big like street scene or a, or a page where I know I'm gonna have to use a lot of different colors and I can't just pick, you know, 10 or so, I try to stay with at least a little bit of a color family. So if I'm using, you know, a ton of pastels and then all of a sudden I throw in a jewel tone or something, you know, that just sort of seems a little bit maybe not balanced or just seems a little bit out of place. So, you know, I really try to think at least a little bit before I even start coloring about what that color story on the page is going to be. So you've seen in some previous videos that I'll even take like just a, just a couple of minutes when I, when, I, when, I, when I look at a page and I'll actually go through my colored pencils and I'll pull some that I think I'm going to use on the page. I may use 90% of those, I may use 50% of those, and I may even throw in a bunch of colors that I hadn't originally pulled. But at least it just kind of gets me thinking about what that page's color story should be or will be uh, and then helps me guide as I'm coloring. So I would strongly recommend that you guys try something kind of similar, especially if you're struggling with your own color choices. Who are your favorite coloring book artists? Oh my gosh, this is a great question. I really love the Romantic Country coloring books by, I'm gonna butcher this, but I think it's eerie, like E. I R Y. Um, you'll find them on Amazon. You'll see a ton of my video tutorials um, featuring this book. It's the Romantic Country series. There's three of them. One actually just came out and I'm expecting it in the mail any day now. Um, but those are my absolute favorite books. Um, second favorite books are actually the Joanna Basford books. So Magical Jungle, uh, Enchanted Forest, um, Ocean, um, Ocean something. I really like the fact that her books are very manageable. So a lot of her pages will have, you know, just, um, they're not all full scenes, essentially. 
they'll maybe have like a like a fun wreath and then you can color the background so you know if you're not into that full page like in the romantic country series of books you can kind of go to one of the joanna basford books to do something that maybe won't take you as long do you ever find yourself out of inspiration despite having numerous books etc Oh my gosh, yes. And I actually see this come up quite a bit in our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group, a wonderful community of folks on Facebook. It's called Pencil Stash Adult Coloring Group. And I, again, I see this a lot. You know, you might have a million colored pencils, a million books, a million open pages to choose from, but for some reason, inspiration is just not there. I was there a couple weeks ago. Uh, I actually wrote about it on my blog. It was it was very disheartening. I think I had tried maybe three or four pages to make a video for you guys for that week, and nothing, nothing good was coming out of it. Like everything that I tried, I just wasn't happy with. You know, when I put a video out, I really like to be proud of it. You know, I certainly don't want to share anything with you guys that I don't think is going to be informative or fun to watch. Um, so there's, that's a lot of pressure, you know, and um, yeah, I completely understand that, you know, you guys might be going through the same thing. So what I find really helps me when I'm feeling a lack of inspiration is actually just to get the coloring books away for just a little while and draw. So I'll actually, again, kind of going back to that example with my daughter, I'll find some sort of reference image that I really, really like, and I'll just try to draw it. Um, I usually find a lot more inspiration from that than the coloring pages for some reason. And then kind of once I get those juices flowing, I'll be able to easily kind of go back to the coloring book and, you know, have that kind of renewed sense of, uh, sense of uh, creativity. All right, guys, that is it for me today. I really hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, you know, I know it's a little bit non-standard, um, but uh, I was getting a lot of great questions, so I really wanted to address some of them here in a video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that like button. I really appreciate it when you guys do that. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing. We actually are doing a fun little exercise on our Facebook group this week. We are doing a one color challenge. So. Everybody's gonna be basically taking any page that they want, any any subject matter, doesn't matter, um, and basically choosing one color to color it with. Uh, now, I'm not saying you can't use a whole range of that color, so if you pick red, you can use you know anything from deep burgundy all the way to pink, um, You know, but you just have to use that one color. So I think it's a really fun challenge. I think that one of the areas in adult coloring that kind of gets overlooked is texture. When you're drawing, you know, you can create a lot of a lot of, you know, interesting little lines, a bunch of interesting little patterns, but in coloring, you know, sometimes the pattern isn't there. They purposely leave a lot of white space so that you can sort of be um, as creative or as not creative as you like. So, this challenge really really focuses on texture. So we're all going to be posting those on our Facebook page on May 19th, and I'd love it if everybody would join in. That's going to be super fun. And I'm actually going to be picking some uh, after that to actually feature on the video next time. So uh, it's not a competition, not in any way, shape, or form. I just, you know, kind of I'm going to grab some uh, some interesting ones uh, from the Facebook group and uh, and put them on the next video release for our featured work. Thanks so much for watching this week, guys. I will see you next time.